We ask the help of Feng Shui master and base design expert Little Johnny in designing a defense. He immediately disagrees with our choices. The choice of elements is good, he says, but it's the color that's wrong. I prefer a more barf green type of color. And the infatigable Johnny immediately gets to work on achieving just that. Anyway, I just told you about the flamethrower's weakness, enemies reaching its base. Well, that's why we collected 1000 walls in the previous phase. Ideally, we want to place the walls far enough out so that the splitters cannot attack the flamethrowers. The flamethrowers are super durable with their 1400 hit points, but it's the flimsy supply pipes I'm worried about. They get blown up constantly through the splash damage and leave the flamethrowers without oil. This must be prevented. Now, a small spitter has 13 range, whereas the medium, large and behemoth have 14, 15 and 16 range respectively. But if behemoths show up before we're out of this base, it's over anyway. So the maximum enemy range we have to deal with is 15. So by placing the outermost wall 15 tiles in front of the flamethrower turret's nozzle, the flamethrowers can barbecue anything outside of the wall. While no spitter has the range to attack anything inside of our walls. And that will be the essence of our defense for the foreseeable future. And to achieve that same effect in a corner in the wall, we use the visual representation of a gun turret's 18 range to decide where the walls should be. Ok, corner design complete. So let's blueprint that as we will need 4 of them to encircle a square. Or something. And let's also make a blueprint for the straight section with the same flamethrower spacing. By strictly using these two blueprints as building blocks, we should be able to make a neat square which will end up exactly where it started. Meanwhile, a single small biter goes into pipe attack mode. Possibly a bad omen. The four oil tanks are already almost full, so before we start building we optimistically add another four. And let's start building with a clean slate. Oh no, I already know what that sound means, but hey, at least we get to watch it because of the radar. Yep, bad omen indeed. These guys also go in full destruct mode, ignoring our turrets and annihilating everything inside. Oh well, we gathered 128k oil, which should be plenty to start off the base. It's time to lay out the shell, our base perimeter, which will function as sort of a defensive prison, really, locking us inside, but hopefully protecting us for long enough until we can break free again. We'd like to have the copper and coal fully within the defensive structure, so... Oh wow, these guys are pretty close by, aren't they? They are not gonna be good neighbors, are they? For the western wall, we just stay west of the stone mine and connect up the corner. And that is gonna be the full width of our base. Less than a single screen wide. Anyway, our perimeter has to be large enough to fit all of our base, including miners, smelters, assemblers, oil processing, research, everything really. On the other hand, a smaller perimeter is easier to defend and maintain. Especially since Factoria guy is still walking very slow and will need to do everything by hand, including repairing our defenses. So what is the optimum size? Well I don't know, but let's caution a little bit on the larger side, just in case we'll be locked up in here for a bit longer than we envision. Anyway, the area until recently known as South Biterville is fully integrated into our base now, so we didn't kick up the evolution factor in vain. The evolution is already nearing 30% by the way, and our base still is just a couple of chests and a broken down, half destroyed oil outpost. It is time for the final act of aggression for a while. Let's create some no man's land between us and that northeast corner biters.
and that pushed the evolution to 32%. Still without the base. So with that out of the way, let's try to build the rest of the shell and find out if we gathered enough materials during our previous game phase base. Well, it looks like we need 50 flamethrowers to fulfill our full design, but we don't even have half the resources for that. I actually have a moment of brightness and I figure this cliff will be super annoying to keep walking around later. So let's extend the southern border one more turret distance. I said earlier I want to preserve as much forest as I can, so why am I blowing them up? Well, it's simple really, it's like those anti wildfire ditches. We remove everything flammable from our flamethrowers range and then some so we don't accidentally start wildfires that can spread who know how far. Not only do we need the forest for the late game, but burning them also causes a lot of pollution resulting in attacks, possibly before we are ready for them. Ah, we said we would save little Johnny, but he'll be within range of the flamethrowers. Sorry guys, but this can only mean one thing. Of course we're not gonna barbecue him, what did you think? This is still an easy solution compared to what I had to go through in my Factorio tightrope series. Okay, so we don't have 50 flamethrowers to complete our design, but for now we can just place the corners and then every third flamethrower. It's not ideal, but at least they still have a small overlap, so all of the wall can be reached by at least one turret. And that's the base encased. We used up 20 of our 22 flamethrowers for this minimal defense. Of course we will try to save the spaceship, it won't fare well against either fire or being in the way of biters. They will chew through it if it's in their way. We then finalize the shell by blowing up the rest of the forest in range of the flamethrower turret, while the ever playful Johnny starts a game of tag. But he can get me, I got me. And that is the whole shell of our base completed. Now it's time to turtle up, and perhaps we'll need some divine intervention later. So let's put all of this collected wood in this chest to be sacrificed to a future entity who will surely help us out to beat this insane challenge. But for now, goodbye.